This is the first time I've done a simultaneous session, both face-to-face -face with you, that's what I'm used to doing, but also online. Um, and one of the things about it is that I need to stay fairly fixed here um, because the camera is pointing towards me, so if I jump around a lot. So probably a little bit more static than usual. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about the case for mindfulness. Um, I have been working over the last 10 years developing an approach towards developing people internationally, um, which have, has a very large slice of the intercultural. So, so it will, I'll be talking a bit about this approach. I uh, should just maybe say a few about myself in case some of you, you know, would like to know my background. So I, for the last 30 years, I've been a partner in a company called Your Associates, which is based in York in the northeast of England. Um, our mission is to develop people internationally, and for that we do language training, we do communication training, we do intercultural training, and we do international leadership training. And those last two areas, the international leadership training and the intercultural training, are what, is what I've been focusing on for the last 10 years. So I work with a lot of clients, both sort of very international business already, so multinational companies, for example, and also companies which are in the process of international maybe early on in that process. Um, and back in York, we have a language training center where we do a lot of language and community. So that's a little bit of a background to that. Um, mindfulness uh, is something which uh, my co-author and I started to focus on uh, over the last few years. And, and mindfulness is... Um, is an approach to developing yourself and developing your skills, which relies on your ability to observe and reflect upon what you're doing, and also relies on your ability to observe and reflect on what other people are doing. So um, at the center of Will I just wait now? Will it come? <coughs> Okay. At the center of what we're going to be talking about is behavior. Um, what I answer is, is what we say and what we don't say, what we do and what we don't do. Um, and when we think about behavior, we uh, identify three um, three main areas that impact on our behavior. One is our culture, so the groups that we belong to, the behaviors that we uh, learn and imitate from the people that we work with, the people, country that we live in, the various groups that we belong to have an impact on our behavior. I think a very thing, important point about intercultural training is never to believe, sorry, uh, never to believe that we can isolate the impact of culture on behavior by itself. We need to certainly look at least as well at personality. I think one of the, the difficulties of a lot of intercultural training is this attempt that some interculturalists make to this, but this behavior uh, is caused by this culture. We always need to pay as much attention to personality as you do to culture. We, okay, we, I've lost the full screen. All right, sorry, I'm changing the size. It'll come back in just a second. Okay. There you go. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> just a second. Can, uh, we just, can we just stay like that? Yeah. yeah. Um, we use a tool to, if you like, inform people and make people more aware of the influence of personality on their behavior. Um, there are web, lots and lots of psychometric tools that you can use. The one that we uh, use is GMS, Team Management Systems, um, which is actually a tool that's, which has been developed by two Australian academics. But they're, all of these tools are based on the work of Carl Jung into personality types. And they're the particular tool we use so that we're trying to raise understanding of the influence of personality on behavior using a psychometric <coughs> tool. Um, the other...
when you again when you when you focus on behavior it would obviously be a mistake to to say what well, behavior is due to personality behavior is to do to do with culture of course behavior is also related to the situation we're in we adapt our behavior according to the situation i mean if you do for example psychometric uh, profiles of people on their personality they're not they're not set in stone for the whole of their lives uh, they do develop and uh, personality develops and obviously, the situations you find yourself in over life have an impact. So it's important always to be clear that you know behavior, international behavior, particularly is linked to personality, culture, and situation. What we um, try to do is to get our participants to reflect on the impact of personality, culture, and the situation on their behavior and also on the behavior of the people that they're working with. Um, so, and that, that, that process of reflection, mindfulness, um, is to do with how able we are to observe and think about our own behavior and observe and think about other people's behavior. Um, this is something which, very least, I think one needs to be training participants to do after the event, <coughs> Uh, if not during the event. I mean, if you think about what I'm doing at the moment, um, if I'm very sort of sophisticated, I can be thinking about the way I'm doing this as I'm doing it. It's quite demanding. But what certainly I can do is after the event, I can think about how I've done it, whether I could do it a different way. So that, that ability to reflect afterwards, to think about how we've done things, is what we, what we understand by mind. It's important to distinguish between uh, influence on behavior and skills. And, and this is something which, in a lot of the training that we do, uh, is not as clear as one might imagine it to be participants. Um, separating out the impact of personality on the way we do things and the influence of our skills how, how well we do things is not easy, not easy for us to do. Um, for example, I, I often give people the example, I mean, I uh, am someone who is not very good at detail, very good at paying attention to detail. But that, that, is, that is something that's very deep in my personality, and I've known about it for a time. Uh, and it certainly, as my colleagues would tell me, affects me. Um, so what can I do about that? I can try and find somebody else to focus on the detail. That's, the, that's a nice solution, but that's a rare solution some, you know, to have somebody else to do that. The, the other thing I can do is I can learn some skills. I can learn some skills which teach me, which develop my ability to focus on detail. So I think it won't change my personality. I'll probably continue to be not very good at detail overall, but I can still learn some skills to get better at it. So I think it's quite important when we approach this issue of, of developing people for their international careers that we understand there are influences on behavior and then there are skills which we can learn. And the skills that we focus on, as I've already said, are language skills, communication skills, leadership skills. We don't focus on subject knowledge, um, but obviously our participants have subject knowledge, finance and whatever, whatever their area, and their subject knowledge also has so well, that's a sort of model for us to think about this. Um, the next question is how are we going to actually approach this issue of mindfulness? How in the in the training room develop mindfulness? And yeah, before I move on to that. Um, to focus on the skills as opposed to influences. We use a couple of tools. Um, we use TIP, which some of you may know, which is called the International Profiler, which is developed by a company called Work. Um, and that gives feedback on people's competencies. Um, and we use another tools and materials called DPI, which we have developed ourselves. So, so those are the point I'm trying to make there is that those are tools which help us to develop skills. But now I'm going to think about how are we going to develop the mindfulness?
That's a reminder there of what we mean by mindfulness, a focus on context and process as well as outcome. This is, a, this is a, I mean, it sounds a rather theoretical point there, but managers, and most of my experience has been working with managers, are very focused on outcome, very focused on results. You know, they tend to be people, high achievers, pushing them, pushing themselves to, to achieve results. Companies press them to do that. They therefore think so much, it doesn't come so naturally about context themselves. They're, they're measuring their performance in terms of results. They're not thinking about so much how they're doing it. So after a meeting, they don't necessarily think about, well, how did I run that meeting? Perhaps could I run that meeting in a different way? What they think about is, did we achieve what I wanted when we achieve? That's the way they tend to think about their work. So getting them to be mindful about context and process is quite difficult to do. Um, and, and being mindful means developing their ability to reflect on their own and others' behavior. So one way, one way we can do that um, is to use cases. Um, I'm titling my talk today, um, The Case for Mindfulness. We can use cases to practice observing and reflecting. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of a video case, and then by giving you a couple of written cases, which we can also talk about. And why do we use cases? I mean, we use cases because they're a very good bridge um, which encourage our learners to move from the observation and reflection on maybe fictional people. It's much easier to so reflect something we see on, on the video or something we read about to observing and reflecting on themselves and their colleagues. And this is, this is quite important psychologically and methodologically for trainers that we perhaps go through these two steps. The first step, observe and reflect on a fictional case, if you like, where there is no harm in sort of allowing people perhaps to, you know, to be critical, etc., what they see. Um, and, so, and then only secondarily ask them to reflect on their own, on their own behavior. Okay, so so we're, using the, we're using the cases as a bridge, as a bridge which will help us uh, to develop mindfulness. Um, so the first uh, case I'd like to uh, show you, just a little extract. Some of you will be with this, so I'm not going to spend too long on this one. Uh, this is a bit of video, um, which comes from the materials which I mentioned earlier, earlier, called the DPI story. So what we've created here is a fictional case, company, certain project in mind, with six people involved, um, six very diverse people, diverse in terms of nationality, in terms of business area, functional area, in terms of gender, in terms of native and non-native people. So a lot of diversity in this particular case. And uh, what we've done is we, we've created a lot of film, which allow us to watch behavior, to watch the behavior of these people working in an international project. Um, and what I'd like to do is to just show you an example of one little extract of video. Um, here are the six characters, and the bit of video which we're going to watch now uh, involve uh, Martine. So she's the uh, a woman product manager, a marketing person from Mexico. She goes to Manfred, she's the project leader in R&D uh, from Germany, and Phil, uh, again, another marketing guy, Southeast Asia from Malaysia, in fact. So this allows us to watch a bit of video about their behavior and to be mindful about what we what we see. Um, yeah, I think we can go straight to the video. <laughs> 